السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Because there is an old African proverb that says, 
whatever the old man will see while sitting on his chair, the young man can never see even if he climbs up a tree. So we need to tap in the experience of our fathers and our grandfathers. They will sit down because of their experience and their knowledge to brainstorm and then discuss and then bring to form what kind of you know ideas that we need to implement when we want the community to develop. Then these ideas are given to the younger ones because they are strong, they have the energy, they will be able to propagate it the way it must be done very well. So if we say that we are only going to use the experience of the old ones. The old ones have the experience, they have the knowledge, but they don't have the energy, the passion, the determination to carry it forward because of age. So the idea will always remain in our heads. It will always remain on documents and on paper. It will always remain in the libraries. It will always remain in the offices because the older guys don't have the energy to implement this. Same way if another community says, we are only interested in the youth. We are only interested in the energy of the youth. That community will be driven by adrenaline and that community will end up in chaos and confusion. That is why when you go to the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has older folks in the community like Abu Bakr Siddiq and he himself the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the other likes like Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib and the likes, these were older guys in the community and then the likes of Ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Abbas were the younger ones. So you find in a lot of hadith the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will sit on the same donkey as Ibn Abbas coaching Ibn Abbas, talking to Ibn Abbas, encouraging Ibn Abbas, propping Ibn Abbas up. It got to a point whereby the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was his relationship with the young people was so strong to the point that he would be in Salat and then the young ones, babies, children, would come and mount his back in Salat. We live in a time whereby Muslims must take care of their older ones and their younger ones. If we really want to develop, the older folks must bring their feathers down to accommodate the younger ones. Yes, young people, we are stubborn. That's true. Young people, because of our exuberance, we might be doing some things that are wrong. But then if you, the fathers, don't bring us closer to you, if you, the fathers, don't bring us onto the decision-making table, if you, the fathers, don't involve us in what is important, we will always engage in unnecessary things. If the fathers don't involve the younger ones, because, as they say, the children of today are the leaders of tomorrow. If you don't start prepping them up now, when you are die, when you die, nobody will be around to take care of your legacy. So you find out that Mus'ab ibn Umayr, a young man, was the first ambassador in Islam to go to Medina. Mus'ab ibn Umayr. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted someone to deliver the message of Islam in Medina. Before he, the Prophet, would come to Medina, he chose Mus'ab ibn Umayr. That day, Mus'ab ibn Umayr was 22 or 23 years old. He left Mecca and went to Medina. By the time the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Mecca to come to Medina, Islam had entered every home in Medina because of the activities of Musab in Norway. Usama Tumultai was appointed an army general at the age of 19 years old. There was Abu Bakr, there was Umar, there was Uthman, there was Ali, there was Talha, there was Abu Ubaidah, there was Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, there was Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. All these big gurus were around. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No, Usama Tudun Zayn, 19 year old guy, you are going to lead the army to war. 
So if we really want to return ourselves to our golden age of power, then Muslims must understand one thing, that is we must go back to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and look deep and then pick lessons in how we be able to blend the experience of the older ones with the power and the energy of the younger ones. أقول ما تسمعون فاستغفر الله لي ولكم وسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو البر الرحيم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا عما بعد. We were speaking about blending the experiences of the older ones together with the power and the energy of the younger ones. We live in a country that prides itself in its freedom and its you know provision of rights for everybody. We are always complaining that the younger ones are stubborn. We are always complaining that the younger ones do not listen. We are always complaining that the younger ones are, are rebellious. But until we bring them closer into the masjid, until we make the masjid accommodate for the younger ones, they won't listen to us. Until we make the home conducive for the younger ones, they will listen to us. If we really, really want to have the minds of our younger ones, then the need for us to involve them in the day-to-day -day activities of the community is very, very important. We can't complain about an issue and then not find solutions for them. We are Muslims. And the Prophet Muhammad had younger ones within his cabinet. Omar bin Khattab, during his time, would bring Abdullah ibn Abbas in the cabinet meeting. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, when the Prophet died, he was only 13 years old. Ibn Abbas was 13 years old when the Prophet died. It means he was born three years before Hijrah. He was born in Islam. So he heard a lot of hadith and Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, the guy was only 13 years old when the Prophet died. And look at the number of hadith he was able to narrate from the Prophet Muhammad because of this, you know, this exposure. So during the time of Umar, Umar will bring him into the meeting and then the other guys were like, Umar was a thought. This guy, we have sons like him at home. Why is he being introduced into meetings of big men like this? So Umar said, no problem, I'll explain to you. So what happened? Umar asked them the question. Why do you think the Almighty Allah revealed in the Ajah Muslim world for you? If the mercy of the Almighty Allah, the victory of the Almighty Allah, and then his, his, his conquest comes. That's surah. What do you think? And that's why I go, you know, uh, the, the power of Allah has come, the victory of Almighty Allah has come, and Islam is being great. That's why. So he asked Ibn Abbas, what do you think? He said, this surah is an indication that the Prophet Muhammad was going to die. How? He said, in the death of Muslim Allah, he will fight you. If the victory and the conquest of Almighty Allah comes, and you see people entering the religion in groups. If people are accepting Islam, what job does the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do again? It is that he's going back. So Ibn Abbas was put in there. So in a nutshell, what we are trying to tell you is that you see the younger ones that we have in our communities, they are the future. In fact, they are the present of the communities and the future of our communities. And then we need to invest in that power and energy that we have. We need to tap 
into that energy. We don't have to leave our young people on the streets. We need to make the most accommodative for them. We need to make our homes accommodative for them. There is an old Turkish proverb that says, if you don't find young ones running around in the first day, then that community has no future. When COVID-19, definitely the children cannot come to the first day. But then in normal times, we should see the young ones running around in the first day. We want them to be playing in the first day than playing in the ghettos. We want them to come and fool and mess up here than them fooling and messing up in the clubs and then in the drug dens. We need to open our masjids and make it accommodating for the younger ones. If we suck them from the masjid and then we complain that they are becoming bad children, who is to blame? We are to blame. Let's make our homes conducive for the young ones. Fathers, Maybe when you grew up in Bangladesh, that was very hard. Your father was strong. He was beating you. He doesn't speak to you. You are now in America. It is different. The 21st century is different. Because you live in times whereby the state can take away your own child from you. And you can't do anything about it. You live in a time whereby if you are found on the street messing up, a stranger can slap you and then correct you. And nobody will complain. Even if you go home and go and tell your daddy that someone has beaten me on the streets. Your father asks you, what did you do? You will not want to tell him what you did because you received extra beatings. We live in times now that even if your house is burning, your your neighbor will not even call 911. He will rather use his phone to picture whatever is happening because he wants to send it on social media. So please, the younger ones are very, very important. They are very, very, very important. If we want to leave a legacy behind us, then we must take care of the younger ones. And taking care of them is opening the doors of capacity to them, opening the doors of our homes to them, giving them leadership positions in the community, putting them at the forefront of whatever discussions that we are doing, if the younger ones feel that they are being involved in those in these activities, they will feel the need and they will believe in them being a part and parcel of the community. But if we just follow them around and shout at them and scold them and scream at them, they wouldn't come to the masjid. We need to let the masjid be accommodated for them. We need to let them understand that they are a pivotal part of our communities. And that is what the Prophet Muhammad did. Most of the Sahaba you hear of are young men, young guys who, because the Prophet involved them in these activities, they were very, very much involved. Finally, Inshallah, tomorrow we will start registration for the summer school. Tomorrow, Saturday, and then Sunday. You can call the number of Imam Abdul Latif, or you can call the number of Brother Walid Rahman to get the enrollment of your children for the summer school. And Inshallah, we will have teachers that are going to teach from Medina and then from England. Inshallah, it is going to be a virtual lesson that we are going to have. Uh, summer school. So don't forget, tomorrow is on site here at the Quran Academy. And then you register your kids, and then inshallah, it's going to be very, very beneficial. <laughs> اللهم أنت أمرتنا بدعائك وأعطنا بالإجابة فدعوناك كما أمرتنا فاستجب لنا كما أعطنا يا رب العالمين اللهم فانزل بنا البلاء ولا يصرف عنا إلا أنت فقد دعوناك أن تصرف عنا فاصرف عنا يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا عديد بل وعديد بل إيمانك نواصينا بيدك ماضي فينا حكمك نسألك بكل اسمك هو لك سميت به نفسك 
أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في العلم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وتلا أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وهمومنا اللهم من أرادنا وأراد الإسلام بسوء فرد كده وعليه اللهم من كنا فكده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وقوموا إلى زلاتكم الله